Hello and welcome to this legislative update regarding school counselors staff time. This video was created due to Senate Bill 1043, which was approved by the 2023 General Assembly. While Senate Bill 1043 made several changes to code, we're going to focus on how it impacts the requirements for school counselors staff time. But before we go any further, let's start with the learning objectives driving this 10 minute video. After watching this video, Participants should gain a better understanding of the following. First, the historical background of previous code requirements for school counselors' time. Second, the contributing factors that drove the most recent legislative change due to Senate Bill 1043. And lastly, we'll take a walkthrough of the updated code requirements for school counselors' staff time going into effect on July 1st of 2023 so you have an understanding of the changes and can work towards alignment in your school or school division. So now let's get started with some historical background information. Let's begin by going back to 2019 when the General Assembly approved House Bill 1729, which amended requirements for the allocation of school counselors staff time. This change meant that school counselors were required to spend at least 80% of their staff time during normal school hours in the direct counseling of individual students or groups of students. It's important to note that prior to this change, state regulations required counselors to only spend 60% of their time providing counseling services. To assist school divisions in aligning with code and in an effort to promote best practices in the field of school counseling, the Virginia Department of Education convened a stakeholder group comprised of school counselors and division administrators to develop guidelines on the suggested best practices on the provision of direct counseling services, which was released via Principal's Memo 1014-19. Now let's take a look at the contributing factors that drove Senate Bill 1043, which resulted in the most recent legislative change for school counselors staff time. Despite the 2019 change in legislation and the development of the guidance document, Virginia school counseling programs and the services they provided varied drastically from school to school. The need to examine this inconsistency in service delivery was only exasperated by the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2022, the Joint Legislative Audit and Review Commission, JLARC, provided a report to the governor and the General Assembly on the pandemic's impact on public K-12 education. Many concerns were noted, including a rise in mental health needs among students. For most of our students, their school counselor will be the only licensed mental health professional they will ever interact with. As a matter of fact, according to JLARC's 2022 report, and the Virginia Healthcare Foundation, 93 out of 133 localities in Virginia are federally designated mental health professional shortage areas. JLARC noted that the increased prevalence in mental health concerns among students made school counselors' time increasingly valuable. However, according to JLARC's report, school counselors typically perform activities that are not related to counseling consuming valuable time that could be spent providing counseling services to students. School counselors make up the majority of school-based mental health staff and have lower vacancy rates than other mental health positions. So it's more important than ever that schools use existing school counselors' time effectively. However, according to JLARC's report, school staff and division leadership shared that school counselors are often asked to spend significant time on non-counseling activities. These non-counseling activities can include coordinating and administering testing, supervising lunch or recess, serving as a substitute teacher, and other administrative duties. While performing these non-counseling activities, counselors are unable to provide direct counseling services to students. The increased mental health needs of our students is a call to action for school and division leaders to examine how school counselors' time is being spent. 
which is why Jay Lark's first recommended legislative action was for the General Assembly to consider amending the Code of Virginia to define direct counseling services to include only those activities established as direct counseling services by the Virginia Department of Education's guidelines on the suggested best practices on the provision of direct counseling services and to expressly exclude from the definition administrative and support activities that are not considered direct counseling. Now that you have an understanding of the background and factors that drove this legislative change, let's take a closer look at the updated code requirement for school counselors staff time. On July 1st of 2023, the new Virginia code language will go into effect, which will direct school counselors staff time to change to the following. Each school counselor employed by a school board in a public elementary or secondary school shall spend at least 80% of his staff time during normal school hours in the direct counseling of individual students or groups of students and may spend up to 20% of his staff time during normal school hours on program planning and school support. Basically, this new language states that direct counseling is to continue to take up at least 80% of the school counselor's staff time. And any remaining time not to exceed 20% may be best utilized for program planning and school support. While the requirement for school counselors to spend at least 80% of their staff time in direct counseling has been in place since 2019, the code now includes a provision that remaining time be spent on program planning and school support. Finally, let's take a look at the new definitions provided by code for what constitutes direct counseling and program planning and school support. We will begin by taking a look at the activities identified under the direct counseling umbrella. Direct counseling includes curriculum lessons and activities, individual counseling, small group counseling, crisis counseling, appraisal and advisement, and consultation, collaboration, and referrals. We will now take a look at how code defines each of these six direct counseling activities. First up, school counseling curriculum lessons and activities. This means the act of providing data-informed lessons or activities at the classroom level or on a school-wide basis to provide students with the knowledge, attitudes, and skills appropriate for their developmental levels. Next, we have individual counseling, which means the act of providing developmentally appropriate, goal-focused and brief counseling sessions to individual students to address issues relating to mental health and wellness, social and emotional development, academic achievement, and college and career readiness. Then we have small group counseling, which means the act of providing counseling to small groups of students with similar developmental or situational challenges with the goal of improving achievement, attendance, mental health or wellness, or behavioral outcomes. Our fourth activity under the direct counseling umbrella is crisis counseling, which means the act of providing counseling to individual students or small groups of students help such students navigate critical situations such as emergencies and crises. Next up is appraisal and advisement, which means the act of assisting students in exploring their abilities, interests, skills, and achievement to make decisions and develop immediate and long range goals and plans. And our final activity under the direct counseling umbrella is consultation, collaboration, and referrals, which means the act of providing information to and receiving information from individuals or teams to support a student's needs, working with and communicating with parents, teachers, administrators, other school staff, and community stakeholders to promote achievement for specific students or promote systemic change to address the needs of groups of underserved or underrepresented groups of students and 
referring students to outside providers and resources as necessary. Lastly, let's review CODE's definition of program planning and school support. Program planning and school support means the act of defining, planning, managing, and assessing school counseling activities. Program planning and school support includes the act of reviewing data, creating annual student outcome goals, creating action plans and results reports, holding annual administrative conferences, monitoring the use of time, creating annual and weekly calendars, and facilitating school counseling advisory councils. In conclusion, it is clear that our youth need increased access to the valuable supports and services that our Virginia school counselors can provide. As we approach the end of this video and begin to consider the changes necessary to align with this legislative mandate, I'm reminded of a quote by Admiral Grace Hopper. The most dangerous phrase in the language is, we've always done it this way. For some schools and divisions, aligning with this change to code will mean a shift in the way they operate and designate responsibilities. Change is challenging but necessary in order to evolve and improve our ability to meet the needs of our students. Thank you so much for watching and supporting school counseling in Virginia. And most importantly, thank you for all you do for students every day.